Well, good morning, gang. You got to see your old pal, Ja, but I dropped him off because I want to go for a hike alone. Sometimes he just stops way too much, and I really want to focus on getting a good hike in today. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on in my brain right now because, uh, well, I think sometimes you guys like to know. Last night I sat down because I told you, like, my focus right now is, like, Michael's wedding, Sweden, and all that stuff, and um, so I sat down last night and I made a list of all the things that I need to buy or I need to be prepared for this and um, just things that I've been putting off or whatever just so I'd have an idea of what kind of money I need to come up with and uh, luckily this is all gonna like go hand in hand you know how the other day I was like oh, yeah, I've been looking around my apartment I'm just kind of tired by of how uh, how much stuff I have and I want to get rid of some stuff it's be perfect because then I'm just gonna sell some of this stuff and it'll uh, it'll help pay for all that stuff and I don't know how much I'm actually gonna eBay even though I told you I, I was just because I don't want to have to worry about shipping it out in some way so I made a list and what I need is of course the new camera um, but I think and I want to run this past my parents because they bought me the camera um, it's all trial and error because I'm so like young at this that I just didn't you know you don't know what you need until you start using it and putting it in practical application so I just want to make run it past them and make sure that it's okay with them that I sell the camera that they got me for Christmas or that Santa got me for Christmas and put it towards this other camera and if I do that between that and what you guys have donated through patreon or PayPal that'll pay for the new camera I won't have to pay for any of it out of my pocket and I know some people have been like well, what's wrong with your cell phone my cell phone has 32 gigs of memory and I have a Galaxy Note 5, so it's one of the few phones that you can't add memory to. And I didn't think I would ever be vlogging when I started, so it wasn't an issue. Um, but because of that, I can only handle so much footage in my phone. Like right now, with everything I have in there, I only ever have 10 gigs available for video. And with what you film, and then when you have to balance it down to the finished product and everything, you have to have extra space. So. Plus, I use my phone for everything. I use it for my GPS, I use it for looking up addresses and stuff, and uh, just kills your battery. Kills your battery bad, fast. And, uh, and if I ever lose my phone or got broken, I'm, there's no vlog, uh, basically. So I need to get the new camera, and I need to get a laptop. Um, I have two computers. Both of them are very, very ancient. I'll show you when I get back. Uh, the one is a Mac desktop, and I got that because when my last computer broke, I didn't have the money to buy a new one, so my friend Carrie was managing properties, like uh, office properties, and some of her tenants had defaulted and left all their computers in there, and she had like three of them in her apartment. She was just like, it's out of date, but do you want it? So I've been using that. I, be, I, I really don't need much. I just need to surf the internet with that. But um, with, the idea of doing this movie for Michael on the uh, the new camera, I need extra space to dump it to. And this guy that I work with through catering, his day job is actually, um, he gets YouTubers tons of plays. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but he works for a company that signs YouTubers. And he's actually already talked to me about signing me and uh, being on their network, which I would make a lot more money and they would hire me out for contracts to vlog. Like if somebody hires their uh, their company and says like, well we need a, we want a, a unique vlog from Scotland, they could send me out for like 10 grand to do that. And um, plus he said my, my ad revenues would go up big time because you get better sponsors through those networks. But uh, he's been trying to teach me how to attract more um, traffic to my channel and all of his suggestions completely make sense, but you have to do it all through Google Chrome. And both my computers are too old to even handle Google Chrome. So he's like, just go to Walmart and get like a $400 computer. So basically I need to get a laptop that can handle um, me transferring photos from a camera. It can handle uploading the program that I use to edit PowerDirector and just something that'll do Google Chrome. So I shouldn't need anything expensive. So he said just to go to Walmart and get one of those. Then I need to get my passport. I need to get a, um, 
what else was on that list? Um, new battery, stuff like that. It basically comes up to like three grand. Ticket to Sweden, all that stuff. So that's kind of my focus right now is I'm just thinking of what I want to get rid of, how I want to sell stuff, and in what order I want to start buying things. I really want to get the camera pretty quick because I want to start implementing it every day. It's going to be better quality, but you know, the problem is like, I mentioned that I want that Sony camera, but it's $300 more than the Canon type version, the G7X, and they both have weird drawbacks. Like, um, one doesn't really affect me, which is the one only shoots four, one shoots 4K and one doesn't. I don't really plan on doing 4K, so that's probably not going to be a big issue, but um, they both have drawbacks, and I've watched easily 20 comparison videos where people have bought both cameras, set them on a tripod together and walked around, take them through different conditions, and the one thing I notice is there's no consistency. If the Sony is awesome on one person's video, and it's focusing great, and it looks great and everything, then the next person's video that you go watch, the Canon looks better. And all the problems that were with the Canon on one video are now the problem with the Sony. So it's almost like you just have to hope you get a good camera, like a good version of that specific camera, because I don't see much consistency. And for a $300 difference, I think I should probably at this point maybe go with the uh, Canon G7X, because it's like six to $700 as opposed to a thousand. So that's just the stuff that's been rolling around in my head. I hope that didn't bore you to death, but I just wanted you to know, like, that's what I'm focusing on, because I wanna make the best videos possible at this point. Um, and I can't film too much at night, because you guys have probably noticed with the Montgomery Cliff vlog that when you film at night with this camera, any anywhere where there's light, it just splashes all the way across the screen, and you, you can't get around that. And if I'm gonna do the robo light display for Thanksgiving and all that stuff with all those lights. I need something that can handle Adjusting the light and the Canon and Sony both look good for that. So Sorry, you just had to watch like seven and a half minutes of all this, but That's me and I'm just filling you in on what's going on in my life right now and I give a massive thumbs down to uh, Samsung today they did a new upgrade um, for their for their phones and I did it and it's completely screwed up the camera. I'm not happy. They moved the record button down to where the button was where you could flip from using the front face camera or the back face camera. And then they moved the button for that front face, front face, back face camera over to the other side of the screen, which sucks because when I'm vlogging, I like having that button right underneath the record button so I can switch back and forth really quick. Now I gotta use my other hand to switch over another reason I'm not gonna be a uh, I'm trying to get away from using the phone that just that just compounds it today and I do really love the footage from the phone in fact I was talking to uh, a guy on set yesterday who was the set photographer and I was telling him my dilemma between the two cameras and he said you know might not be a bad idea to think of uh, just going out and buying a $300 iPhone 6 plus and he goes they have great cameras and uh, they can handle quite a bit. He goes, in some ways you can't tell the difference. You might want to go that route, but I don't, uh, I don't trust the camera lenses. Like I said, I'm getting so much splash from how small these lenses are that I think maybe going with a camera that is built for adjusting to that, like the point and shoots, that's the way to go. And part of, uh, part of that money that I got to come up with, well, actually I don't have to, but I've already incorporated it into it is the, uh, getting the new headshots taken. Jesse referred me to a photographer that did hers that she really loved, and that person's $500. And then the person I found online who I really like, I love his work, and a lot of his people book, he's also 500 bucks. So I actually have that money, and I already have it set aside. I'm just trying to come up with everything that I need to pay for, up until Sweden in August. Well, actually late July, it looks like I'm gonna be spending my birthday in Sweden this year. My birthday is July 30th, and the latest date they wanted me there was August 1st, and I don't wanna really be traveling near my birthday, so I'm just gonna go before it. So you'll probably get close to two weeks worth of Sweden vlogs.
Duly noted. Do not feed the wildlife chocolate chip cookies. That sign couldn't have been more clear. Yep, really hating how they changed the buttons on this phone. Oh, so I mentioned that I'm gonna um, be selling my vlogging camera, or one of them. Um, the reason I was mentioning is because I'm trying to decide whether I should just sell it locally or if one of my fans wants it, like if one of you guys wants to buy it, because I know maybe sometimes that's a collectible somebody might want, and the camera's only four months old. I've filmed my uh, in utero vlog with it, the uh, Morrison Hotel, good like 15, 20 vlogs at least with that camera, so somebody's interested in buying it. I was looking for like all the accessories, the camera and everything for like 350 and then if I have to mail it, like whatever shipping would be. And be on the lookout. Um, when I get that new camera, I'm gonna do a special thank you vlog to everybody who's donated any money to help make the vlog better. Even if you donate a dollar, I wanna do like a thank you vlog. So, <clears throat> you'll have that to look forward to hearing your name on a special vlog. Cause I really do appreciate it and I think that in this 250 days, the vlog has gotten better, and it's only going to keep getting better. From my house to the observatory is a constant incline the whole way. That's why I'm breathing so heavy. Literally from the time you leave my door till you get here, it just keeps inclining slowly, then greatly. The dogs don't belong to that couple. I know the guy who walks all those dogs. That's a cool idea, if you can get all eight of them to stand still for long enough. Let's go check out the James Dean perch. Well, looks like everybody's there. We'll go beside him. Don't worry, I do have an actual vlog idea. We are still gonna go do a new vlog idea. Go chase! Ja. Friday traffic. This place smells amazing. As I was walking by, it actually did smell like homemade ice cream. Graham Parsons is a guy who I've been a fan of for quite a few years, and uh, he's also a guy who is kind of credited with bringing country music into the forefront of rock and roll, and he kind of moved out to Los Angeles. Uh, he was in a band called the International Submarine Band, and Graham kind of had, in a weird way, a luxury because he came from a pretty wealthy family, even though he had a lot of family tragedy that led to him basically being, seems like, uh, depressed all of his life. But um, Grandma's a guy who never really had to worry about money, and because of that, he was always just kind of searching for something, but he wasn't quite sure what he was searching for. And uh, he had seen Elvis Presley perform in his town when he was a kid. His family, like I said, was pretty wealthy, so they actually, like, funded him to do anything he wanted. He had a music room in his house. They bought a club when he was 16 so that he could perform in it, have a place to perform with his band. And once he found out about country music and, and country western, particularly like Buck Owens, Lefty Frizzell, and people like that, he just went nuts for it. And he liked it so much that he just felt like everybody in the world needed to know who George Jones was and what, what that was all about. So when he was in the International Submarine Band out here, they were like cutting their first record and he was already like pretty much drifting his way out of the group. He had met Chris Hillman who was in The Birds and said that The Birds was looking, were looking for a keyboard player. Graham was a guitar player but he kind of faked his way through keyboards and joined The Birds. And by joining The Birds, he actually influenced the, an entire change in their music. They went full country. Um, he was part of the band when they were that sweetheart of the rodeo. The whole reason he ended up leaving the birds was because he just, it seems like ever since he met Keith Richards, they had this kinship, and though it was never said, I always want to believe and I always feel like 
part of Graham's life path was to do music with Keith Richards. I, I don't know whether he thought that he was going to be in the Rolling Stones at some point or what, but um, as Chris Hillman from The Birds would say, at the time there was an apartheid in South Africa and they were supposed to go perform in South Africa and Graham said, no, nope, I'm not going to go because of the apartheid. And he goes, which it had nothing to do with that. He said he didn't want to go because the Rolling Stones had invited him to go somewhere else and he wanted to stay and hang out and party with Keith. And so he just quit the band. And since he didn't need the money, you know, he had his own, um, they said like 55 grand a year that he would get kind of uh, portioned out to him monthly. So he, he, he had this infatuation with like the rich lifestyle, the fancy clothes, the fancy cars, as you can tell by this record jacket. And, um, and then just kind of let the, the he was great at writing music but he let the performance fall by the wayside so about two months after he left the birds him and chris hillman buried the hatchet and they decided they were going to work together again on the flying burrito brothers and they had a really great career going there as far as writing the music initially um and this is where they got into all the nudie suits that you'll see right there but part of the problem was that graham got heavy into all the drugs and all the the drinking and his mother had been committed to an asylum and his stepfather had gotten remarried to their babysitter and this just kind of like threw him for a loop and uh, so Graham was doing drugs hardcore and he talked the band the Flying Breeder Brothers into doing a tour where they traveled by train and um, the whole train ride they were just like their road manager was saying like it was all just the whole train ride was them doing drugs and me trying to hide the drugs from them and just to at least to make it through so they could perform that night and he said uh most of the times they were just doing drugs the whole time and they would get to the show and the show would just be a catastrophe and they actually did this they were invited to perform woodstock and they decided to do this train tour that's how out of it they were and uh after a few nights of performances they were so bad they ended up having to cancel the tour and they had to be flown back into Los Angeles. And Phil Kaufman said three of the five guys, he had to prearrange for wheelchairs to be waiting there because they were so blown out that they had to be wheeled out to their cars. But Graham ended up getting thrown out of the Flying Burrito Brothers. And this was an album that they put out a couple of years after his death uh, because these were half the songs on this were um, songs that Graham had written and recorded with the Flying Burrito Brothers and then the other half were ones that he had done with uh, his band with Emmylou Harris and he basically always had loved the sound of uh, male and female country singing together and he was always looking for a voice when somebody turned him on to Emmylou Harris she came out here and you know basically inherited what I was telling you um, you know like he was just all drugs and couldn't perform but when he was in the Flying Breeder Brothers, the reason that all ended was because he had this really great soothing voice. And that was his real charm in life was that he could, um, it's what Keith Richards would call um, high lonesome, where he could sing in a way, even if he was off key, to make people cry. He could, they said he could make like the hard, most hardened bar waitresses cry. And um, also said that uh, they would hang out and they would party together and everything and it happened so much so that during uh altamont the uh the rolling stones put the flying breeder brothers on their bill just so they could hang out and when all hell broke loose with the uh, hell's angels and they were beating up people the flying breeder brothers went on and uh actually calmed the whole thing down it all stopped while they were performing but then uh once they quit performing it all went crazy again and when the stones went to take off Graham hopped on their helicopter with him and left to all the Burrito Brothers here. I guess they said that was like typical Graham fashion. But um, one night, Chris Hillman said they had, a, they had a concert and nobody had seen Graham in days. He showed up at the Rolling Stones recording studio and walks in and says, uh, sorry to interrupt guys, but have you seen Graham? We have a show tonight. They point to the corner and he's over there and uh, Keith's like, I ask you if you... Uh, if you had practice or anything, and Graham said, ah, they can they can work around me. And Mick Jagger actually said, Graham, you are in a band and you have obligations. You need to go and perform those obligations. He goes to do the show, 
he's so drunk and he's so drugged out of it that when they start performing one of their upbeat songs, he starts singing a ballad. And at the end of the set, uh, Chris Hillman looks over at him, punches a hole through Graham's guitar, and then fires him from the Flying Burrito Brothers. And so when Graham went through that whole phase where he was drinking and doing drugs, he brought in Emmylou Harris. Emmylou Harris had never performed with somebody that was like that. And as soon as she saw it, she's like, I refuse to perform like this. And she made the band practice. She made them get good. But the reason that I'm outside walking around with this album and telling you this story is because I'm actually at the location where this was shot. Graham's car would have been sitting right here. Graham would have been standing right in front of it, you can see. And uh, they cut off the word burrito, but you can still see, or no, you can still see burrito, but they've changed the signs a little bit, but that is it. And I hope if you've never heard the Flying Burrito Brothers or Graham Parsons, check out Hot Burrito 1 and Hot Burrito 2. They're two companion songs and they are completely different and they show two completely different sides of Graham, but they show the majesty in his voice. Over the time that I'm vlogging, I'm gonna tell you guys many stories and do many vlogs on Graham. I didn't really know how to introduce this if you didn't know him, but a lot of his life, it seems like, like I said, even Keith Richards said, you know, the reason that I didn't record anything with Graham was because I just always thought he would be alive. I always thought we would have the rest of our lives to do it. And uh, Graham died at the age of 26. I'll definitely go out to where he died and do that vlog at some point. I used to always stay out there at that hotel and in that room. But Emmylou Harris felt compelled after he died to help put out the uh, the rest of the songs that he had done with her and Elvis's band. He actually, when he would do cut albums, he would hire Elvis's band to come from Vegas and uh, do like a weekend of recording. And that way, even if Graham sounded terrible, the music would be perfect. Um, Emmy Lou Harris went on to have a great career, but I've always loved this album. And uh, I was looking at it the other day, and I was thinking, like, that's not too far away from where I live. God rest your soul, Graham. You guys know I'm always looking for like a good burrito place or to, you know, find a good one now that mine's gone. And uh, I'm gonna try this one out. Since Graham used to eat here, I'm gonna try it out. And while I was up there ordering my food, she goes, oh, I saw you recording the thing. And I said, do a lot of people come here because of Graham? And she said, yeah, a lot of people. And then she like took a moment and she was like, they don't make music like that anymore. And I was like, yeah. But you can tell in the background, um, if, you look at, if you look at the cover here, you can tell in the background that the Chevron station is now a 76 station, but uh, it's pretty similar, pretty much the same place. And there's the other side of Graham's Burrito King if you ever want to come check it out. I know a lot of people that watch my channel are Graham fans. I've gotten quite a few messages asking why I hadn't done a Graham vlog, and to be honest, I don't have a good answer for that. I've actually been trying to find the Gilded Palace of Sin house, and I can't find an address. All I've been able to find is some people say it was blue, and some people say it was on Devonshire and uh, Ventura, but I haven't been able to find an exact address. I need to find Chris Hillman and ask him. Cineholic gourmet cinnamon rolls, holy cow. And in case you were wondering what kind of computer that I was mentioning earlier that I had that was an ancient relic. This is my main my main computer. I don't even recall what it's called, but I'm sure anybody that knows anything about computers will say that it was probably a 2007 or 2009, something like that. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the vlog today, and I hope you learned something. If you didn't want to hear me talk, I hope you won't complain, because I put a big warning right at the very beginning of the video that I was going to be basically talking for the first 12 minutes, so there you go. I tried to make everybody happy today. Is that possible? Can you make everybody happy? I don't know. I tried. Anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I really never know. I know that I'm not working this weekend. Well, not yet anyway. 
which is a rarity. Usually I'm working at least one day, so I guess it gives me two days to get into trouble, go have fun, and explore the world. So come back and see me tomorrow, and if you didn't know anything about Graham Parsons, I sure hope you'll check out his music. I, I, I didn't mean to make him sound like nothing but a druggie. He wasn't, but that was a big part of his five, six years of his 20s, and it's really sad that uh, he was so sad that it, he just took mescaline and heroin and cocaine and just drank and just did everything, pretty much anything that he could. But his music is beautiful, his voice is beautiful, his songs are worth listening to, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was just a burrito stand, but pretty memorable one. Hope you guys have a great night, and uh, from Hollywood, California, your old pal Jordan the Lion saying, Good night!